have you ever wondered if those cheap rotary tools you can find for under $40 are any good? And is it possible that they have the same functionality as the name brand Dremel rotary tools, which will run you upwards of $120? Well, in this video, we're going to be breaking down the five areas that you need to consider when you are choosing a cheap rotary tool, as well as when I think you should upgrade to a more premium option. First of all, of course, there's going to be a difference in build quality. So with a premium rotary tool from Dremel, you're promised some more longevity. They're probably gonna have better warranties. Um, but then with a cheaper rotary tool, right, you're gonna obviously run into some build quality uh, issues. First of all, like some of the rubberized sections on this are coming up, but it was a lot cheaper. So you're always thinking about how much money am I willing to save for the disadvantage advantages that I'm going to take with a cheaper rotary tool. Also, your Dremel is going to be built with better components overall, which makes gives you a couple advantages. But first of all, when I took this tool apart, not recommended to do on your own, you'll avoid any kind of warranties that you have is basically built of like a motor with a shaft on the inside, a couple a little coupling to minimize vibrations, and then a couple boards and switches so that it's functional as a rotary tool, then it's put inside of this classy looking yellow housing. So the truth is most of your rotary tools that are on the really budget side are probably made of basically the same components with a different housing on them. You'll notice a lot of cheap rotary tools have basically the same switch right here because that's just a stock cheap switch. And also they'll have pretty much the same dial on them and they'll be in the same kind of weird locations where like one will be on the side and one will be on the top. I had one with one on the bottom and one on the other side. It's all just kind of weird when you get a nicer tool, you get a little bit more comforts in the way that they thought about the tool. All of the controls are right on the top of your premium tools. And also just the locking button has way more locking positions to make it faster to change your tools versus this one only has two positions and that can make it a little bit more annoying to find right where you can click it in to help change your tools. Also on this tool, you can't accidentally lock it while you're running the tool. So if I push the switch forward, my lock button doesn't go down. I can't accidentally destroy something. Whereas even if this tool is on, I can still send a pin straight through that shaft, which could potentially cause damage to my tool, but would definitely stall it out. And just as an FYI, corded tools often can be lighter than cordless ones because they don't have to carry a battery pack on the back. The second area to consider is noise. Now, this tool from Yen Hong is actually quieter than the Dremel, but it's sacrificing something we'll get into later to achieve that. Whereas most uh, cheap tools are gonna be louder than the more expensive one because they have lower quality build. And this Yen Hong tool does tend to get louder once it's under load, which kind of makes sense. As a tool's hitting stuff, there's some more vibrations that are gonna make noise. Also, it's worth mentioning, this tool doesn't always hold hold the bits in it super well. So its accessory pack is right here. If I try to load something into this, the, the chuck doesn't always hold on to it quite as well as the Dremel one, and it doesn't come with a collet. But hey, if we're just meeting, my name's Eli and this is Maker Brain, and it would mean the world to me if you liked and subscribed this video if you're getting value out of it. If you don't like the video, then hit the dislike button. But more importantly, there are links and resources in the description down below that I've collected there for you, including links to this Dian Hong Rotary tool, as well as a 10% discount code that they have available for you down there if you want to pick this one up. I'll also have a link to the Dremel 4300, which is my favorite rotary tool, but it's also the most expensive, as well as another corded rotary tool that I've tested and enjoyed that is much cheaper. The third area to consider when purchasing a cheap rotary tool are the accessories. So this Dian Hong tool came with a small pack of accessories. It's got some cutoff wheels, some cutoff wheels, some sanding discs, uh, and some sanding drums, as well as some polishing wheels, but it doesn't have any real like polishing compound in here. Some wire brushes and a couple other cutting tools, as well as a drill bit, a bunch of grinding wheels, and a power carving bit. But in this category, again, you're gonna be losing some build quality on the accessories themselves are not gonna be made as well. They might not be quite as durable or last as long, or maybe they're not quite as concentric, which makes the tool more noisy when they run and lowers their service life because they're not spinning perfectly. 
Not only will more premium tools come with more accessories, but it's going to be easier to get aftermarket accessories uh, after you've bought the tool. So Dremel has a whole story where you can get bits and tools specifically for them, whereas if you buy a random cheap rotary tool, it's going to be a lot harder to find stuff that fits. So right here, I've taken the grip piece off of this tool and it does fit the standard size that Dremel uses. If you wanted to get something upgraded on the end, you can also get all kinds of like shields and other attachments to put on here. Unfortunately, they do not have the same collet size. So if I bought a collet from Dremel, it's not going to fit into my Dian Hong tool perfectly. You can see that rattle. That's never going to work. It should fit tightly in there, which means you're pretty much always going to have to be using this three jaw chuck, which isn't quite as reliable. You can see that the external thread on this isn't even the same. I can't get this collet to screw on, which means that any of the components that come with Dremel that would screw onto something like this are not going to fit this tool, which means most of your aftermarket accessories are going to be a gamble whether or not it's going to fit on your tool, which is a much bigger pain than if you knew it was going to fit on your Dremel. Of course, if you buy an aftermarket accessory, they all just have a simple little shaft and that'll always fit into your three jaw chuck. That's the benefit of having a three jaw chuck. It can fit anything. The fourth area to consider is actually the case that comes with your tool. If you're ever transporting your tool or need it for other things, the case is really important. And also if you get a really flimsy cheap case, it can die on you and then your tool is left without a good way to hold its accessories. So interestingly, this battery powered Dian Hong tool comes with a zipper case, which is kind of fun to use, but doesn't feel like it was really designed for this tool. All the pieces basically just sort of sit in here and you can close it and it does zip up, but it's kind of tight sometimes. However, this is a really small case, whereas the Dremel case is about four times as big. So if I wanted to travel, it would obviously be easier to take the cordless tool with me, but it does have fewer accessories. Inside of this Dremel case, you can see that we have all kinds of accessories and also the accessory box itself is nicer. So this has a nice, more sturdy, flexible clip right here and there's more like compartments. This whole thing comes out and you've got all of your sanding drums underneath. You can see that with the Dian Hong tool holder, it's a, these clips are a little bit more fiddly. Boom, they're kind of harder to undo. And I feel like I'm gonna break this box if I open and close it too many times. Whereas we have real hinges on this box and this flexi clip is a lot better than these little flexible ones. Now I mentioned that the Dian Hong tool is actually quieter than the Dremel, but that is because it is a lower powered tool. You can see that it is a 12 volt tool. That's partly because it has a cordless tool. It's got to be powered off of a battery pack. You can't draw as much power as if you go into the wall. Whereas you can see on the label for the Dremel 4300, this is 120 volts. So if I turn this all the way up to its max power and plug it in, It's a pretty noisy tool. But what this means is that your more expensive Dremel is going to be able to handle higher power applications. It's not going to bog down as much when you put it under load and it's going to be able to maintain its speed. One more thing to note is that battery powered tools, it's often convenient to have extra batteries. This even comes with a nice little charger. But the issue with the Dian Hong tool is they actually will only send you with one battery and you can't buy extra batteries, which means if you're charging the battery, you can't be using the tool which is pretty annoying. They did assure me that if you have an issue with your battery, they will just send you an entirely new tool, but that still seems kind of like a sad way to solve this problem. So I'm about to answer this question, but before I do, I want to know your answer in the comments below. A lot of you are more experienced than me around these kinds of power tools or tools in general. So your opinion is super important, but when do you decide to go with a cheap tool, whether it's a power tool or maybe even a hand tool, and what makes you decide to go with a more expensive tool? Write your answer in the comments below. I read and reply to every comment. I'd love to hear from you. Now, my opinion is that 
Cheap rotary tools can generally meet all of your needs. If I was a 14 year old and my grandparent gifted me this tool for Christmas, I would use it for all kinds of things and it would work really well for a long time. I could buy some extra bits off of the internet for other things I needed to do and the little issues that come with it wouldn't bother me too much. But if you end up using a cheap tool enough that it breaks on you or the little inconveniences with it become so annoying that they're really slowing you down, or if you're just buying a tool right away and you know that you're gonna use it consistently, definitely get a more expensive tool. So if a cheap tool seems right for you, you can hop in the description down below and pick this one up for less than $40, especially with that 10% discount code. If you think you are more of a corded road rotary tool person, I have another rotary tool linked down there as well that I really enjoyed using as well as a video reviewing that. But if you're interested in premium tools, you can pick up this Dremel from the description down below or watch my review of the Dremel right here or that corded cheap rotary tool right here. As always, I'm Eli Tennant. This is Maker Brain, and God bless you.